Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. I have done something that I know is going to be controversial among all of you, but to be honest with you, I had very little choice. Uh, I have intentionally lost the Battle of Antietam. First, a little background. Um, playing through on Legendary Campaign, I uh, got to the point where I'm at the Battle of Antietam, and from what I've seen, and I've done a lot to experiment and mess with this to, to prove that it's true, no matter what you do, the Union Army will be... Uh, you will be 39% of his number at the Battle of Antietam. However many troops I added or took away, he had um, my total uh, of guns and my total of infantry was 39% of his. So even if I had gone up to 100,000, he still would have grown that exponentially. The only exception, of course, is once you hit his limit as far as how big his army is. But I was at a place where I could throw every last soldier I had into my army and it still made him uh, go up. So... Uh, even at 39,000 men, I was outnumbered 100,000 to 39,000. I played through the Battle of Antietam with about six different builds of my army. I tried about 10 different tactics. I probably played the battle 20 times in the last couple of days. I could not find a way uh, to do anything but lose. Uh, there's probably a way I could have uh, snuck in there and gotten a draw. But even then, it would have been at the expense of losing uh, probably 20,000 men. Uh, I just made the decision that the, the 44 um, points that I would lose, the reputation points that would take a big hit to my morale, uh, was better than having my army destroyed at Antietam. So I made the decision that as soon as the battle started, I hit fall back, and I just dropped all of my men out, and instantly the battle ended. So that's where we're at. Uh, I've also, I went back and kind of replayed uh, things on the battle. Uh, through the campaign, I went all the way back to, uh, I believe, uh, the, ja the Valley Campaign. Uh, Jackson's Valley Campaign, and I replayed everything up to this point. Uh, basically doing everything I could to minimize my casualties. So, uh, long story short... If I'm going to be faced with a situation where he's going to vast me, vastly outnumber me no matter what I do, I decided I was better to go with as small an army as possible moving forward that was as well equipped and as experienced as possible to try and give me the best chance to survive going forward. So um, I've got to rename some of these again, but let me show you basically what I've done. As I've gone in, instead of putting all the points into politics, uh, I put a lot into training and into medicine. Uh, thereby kind of getting the biggest bang for my buck uh, and going forward with a small force. So as you can see, I've got a lot of two-star uh, brigades at this point. I don't even have 2,500 men in each one yet because uh, I haven't put the points in to be able to do that. Uh, I'll probably do that after uh, Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg, I figured, survive Antietam, get back on my feet, and do a number on him at Fredericksburg. So that's kind of the plan at this point. Um, we can talk more about that as we go along, about my thought process and why I've chosen to do it that way. But here we are, and we're going to go ahead and go into the Battle of Corinth, which is the next battle on the list. And uh, I've got 15 brigades that I can take into this one. And there we have it. I'm going to be outnumbered again. About the same number of guns, pretty close, but he's got more soldiers than I do. So been a while since I've played Corinth. Uh, I know that I have to attack him. So let's go ahead and look at the instructions. Uh, Yankees have deployed their left flank at Memphis Road, leaving a significant gap in their center. Their headquarters are established in this farm. Attack swiftly and crush the federal flank. So, um, as I was starting to mention a minute ago, i got to go back in and do the names again for the, uh, the brigades that are named uh, for my patrons. I will do that. Uh, just as soon, as soon as humanly possible. I haven't done a video for like a week because I've been trying to figure out this whole Antietam thing. Uh, and I finally made up my mind today. Uh, you can see with my guns, I'm bringing in heavy guns. 10-pounders, 14-pounders, 24-pounders. Uh, I'm going to keep them back as best I can. Uh, Corinth is an interesting battle. I do remember this one. Uh, he's going to park right at the edge of these woods, which is exactly what I would do if I were in his situation. So I'm going to focus solely on this side. I just got three hours. I got to take the farm. Again, my goal 
is keep my army intact, lose as few men as possible. So moving forward, my strategy is going to look like this. I'm going to keep my army tightly packed together. Uh, I'm going to lead with the lower experienced units, let them take the majority of the casualties. In this case, I've got three one-star units. Uh, I, I've named all of my units that are using farmer or reboard farmer muskets as militia so I can identify them on the battlefield a little better. So I'm going to lead. I've only got three in my first corps that aren't two stars. I'll lead with them. Then I'll come in with a couple of rows of two star. Keeping everybody tightly packed. Going to try to use my experience to my advantage because I'm going to be outnumbered almost all the time. So it's kind of a change in tactics. I've never done this before, but if I'm going to have any chance whatsoever to win this war on Legendary, it's what I'm going to have to do moving forward because that Antietam was just, it was a nightmare. Uh, I started out first part of the battle, as you often do, you know, pretty even odds. And I think at one point I had inflicted something like 14,000 casualties on him and I'd only lost 5,000. And I still had no chance whatsoever to win that battle because he got to the point where he outnumbered me about 70,000 to 25,000 at one point. And I just, I kept him well supplied. I did everything I could to try and win that battle and I just couldn't do it. So he's advancing out. This is something I've been learning with the uh, legendary mode is that he's much more aggressive. So we kind of have to account for that and just plan on him doing things like this where he jumps out in front of me before I can even get to where I want to be. So we'll go with it. Get these guns over here. Start shelling him the best I can. Let's get Rhodes up here. So I ended up not being able to lead with my one-star divisions because he jumped out in advance and didn't even give me a chance to line them up. Good news is my two-star are pretty effective at driving off units pretty fast like that. So we'll get these guys out of here and then we'll figure out my battle line. doing up a uh, channel update. Uh, I went over 2,000 subscribers a couple days ago, so just want to do a, a quick thank you to everybody for that. I'm also going to give you a question of the week, and I need to start getting back to doing those more often because I really enjoyed uh, your answers to those and just having that kind of interaction between us as we talked about historical things. All right, here he comes. start shelling this guy because he's out in the open. Let's see if I can get another unit around here. I got uh, two hours and 20 minutes yet. Plenty of time to get down and take this objective. He's being really aggressive coming out at me. which is fine. Uh, I'm just going to have to inflict some casualties on him, even the odds a little bit. Looks like I've got about 2,500 more men than he does at the moment. Casualties are pretty even so far. I don't like that. back there up too close. I'm trying to get another brigade around Fuller here so I can get as many firing on him as possible, cause him to break. So I can get my lines the way I want them to. I don't I don't like where I'm at at the moment.
There we go. Just now getting Frank's militia into position, and that's when he's going to break. keep pressing ahead. I, I've got two hours and it seems like a lot of time, but with him playing out this far, it's going to make it that much harder for me to get at that objective with the strategy that I'm employing. Just gotta watch that he doesn't bring up another unit up here on Mahomes' flank. in the big guns, the 10 pounders, 14 pounders, 24 pounders, is that I knew that they could cause damage from a distance. I don't have to do the leapfrog thing where I keep moving my guns forward to keep them being effective because I knew I was attacking. I'm going to have to move forward because i gotta, I got to keep close enough to be firing on these guys. Look at the casualties. Oh, he did get some reinforcements. So he's lost about 2,000 men. I've lost about 1,300. Oh, Rhodes, where are you going, dude? Yeah, he's trying to shift because there wasn't enough room for him in the line there between Pete's and Frank's militia. goes all over. Now we can move up and start hitting Hackleman and hopefully drive him back. nice thing about these formations, uh, sometimes with the fortifications, is that they put the units in weird angles and allow you to hit their flanks. Hackleman's not going to last too much longer right there. Hour and 38 minutes. Uh, time's starting to become an issue. Hopefully this is one of those battles. Uh, it's only 11.22 in the morning, so I would think that this would be one of those battles that's going to let me keep fighting. Even if the time runs out, but we won't know until we find out. Alright, I can move forward. i got to get a two-star unit over here because I've got all my one-stars in one spot. same time just because I'm going to kind of halt. I'm not going to push on my final attack until I get those guns back going again. Here come the reinforcements. Oh, to my rear? Oh, lovely. Alright, that's okay. I've done this battle and I had kind of forgotten that that happens. Oh, Rhodes, turn, 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 buddy. No. Right, I gotta drive these skirmishers out so they stop getting into his flank. Get a little 
little more bloody. very long there. Uh, he's lost 3,500 men. I've lost 2,300. I don't like it when the odds are that close. The losses are that close. Well, that helped. Frank's militia is exhausted, so I can't expect a whole lot of them out of them over on my right right now. But I do need to press ahead because I can't let these guns get into me like this. Hicken Looper. Um, I have to look into that. I wonder if that's a historic uh, battery commander's name. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I'm sure I got somebody out there watching this. It's from Colorado. I think that's the name of your governor, isn't it? Keep an eye on things over here. Press forward on this side. Look how these guns are doing. 24 pounders, 239 kills. 10 pounders, almost 200. Warren, that's my, uh, I think that's my Napoleons. Yeah, so they're not doing as much because they're smooth bores and they're back kind of far. Maybe we'll move the smooth bores up over here. Try to swing around here. Just gotta be careful. Frank's militia is just now getting some condition back. But we gotta get these guns driven off. My left flank's definitely doing its job. They're all inflicting more than they're losing. In fact, with the exception of Lily right here in the center, everybody is doing quite well for themselves. Lily's the only one who's lost significantly more than he's inflicted. Alright, we got 51 minutes. He's solid right around there. Only 13% condition for Frank's militia. I really don't want to advance now because he'll probably. He's going to get hit by a canister fire by these guns and he's going to immediately get driven off, but I'm not sure I have a choice at the moment because I've got to press this attack. Let's see how we're doing on supply. I think everybody, all the infantry is good on supply. Yeah, we're not going to run out before this battle's over. So I'm going to line up two star units right behind these two front line ones. I'm going to try to swing this around like a gate and take this objective. I can't even see it at the moment. I think it's right here. Oh, it's right here. Okay, there it is. Can't even really see it because it's kind of hidden. Alright, I'm going to let Rhodes hold. I'm going to leapfrog him with Wheeler. fire. Frank's down to 8, 7%, 6, he's about to break. 
but I expected that. Fuller's going to break here pretty soon. And then I'll just have this one line to go. I still got a half hour. I'm just, I don't want to take any chances with this battle being one of those ones. Amber's right killed, Braxton Bragg killed. In one volley, I lost a Major General and a Brigadier. Well, historically, Braxton Bragg is no great loss. I gotta drop P's back. He's lost almost 800 men as a two-star unit. That's gonna be hard to replace. He's putting up a fight right here. That's for sure. All right, we got an ammo issue. Let's get over here and resupply these guys quickly. Man. I'm going to have to get Stonewall up there to drive these guys off. Baldwin's going to get hit on his flank just because of how he's lined up with this flank sticking out right here. There we go. 13 minutes to go. So he's lost 7,000 men. I've lost 4,400. Not bad, considering I'm assaulting. Hand out number. got to get Allen to go away. You got to be careful of Wheeler's flank here. Alright, we've secured the farm. It's contested, but honestly that doesn't mean a whole lot at this point. Hold it when the battle ends. Okay, so the main thing is, you know, I'm suffering from morale hits right now. Uh, Ten is the hit that I'm taking. But there we go, uh, almost 5,000 casualties, 7,600 for him. Uh, I was outnumbered. It's legendary mode. I'll take it. Uh, let's look real quick. I did capture. I'm, I'm, I'm capturing a decent number of Harper's Ferry 1855s at this point, which is huge for me. Stonewall is a major general now. I did lose Braxton Bragg killed. Ambrose Wright was killed. Um, so kind of a wash as far as that goes. Let's just look at the losses. Um, I didn't take a lot of militia into this one, and maybe I should have. What, what messed me up there was that he advanced his line, and I didn't have time to get my men in line the way I wanted to. Um, but that's why he did that, and, and it was effective that he did that. So we're going to go Army Organization here because I am going to have to consider at some point having 2,500 men in a brigade um, in some situations. But let's go ahead and take a look ahead. We're going to be doing Prairie Grove next. And I just want to look at the numbers, what I'm going to be facing there. Uh, again, 26,000 men. This time I'm defending... So that's the good news. We'll, we'll bring in the, um, the smoothbore artillery for that one. Uh, I can only take 12 brigades, though, so I'm still definitely going to be outnumbered. But we'll see how it goes. Um, so I know there's going to be a lot of comments about my decision to intentionally lose Antietam. Uh, 
I promise you it was not my first choice, and I did everything I could this past week to try and figure out a way to win that battle, but uh, no matter what I did, it was going to be, I was only going to have 39% of the men that he had. Uh, so, I, I, like I said, I tried everything, just couldn't do it. Uh, so I had to make the decision to do that, and as long as your um, reputation doesn't go below zero, you don't lose the war. So I was close, because I only had 51 reputation going into Antietam. So I'm still taking a morale hit. The good news is my morale's still pretty good uh, in a lot of these units just because of the uh, experience that I have. So we'll get rebuilt, uh, refit, and ready to go for this next battle. Uh, welcome your comments, your questions, your observations, any and all those things. Uh, be watching later today. I'll have my uh, channel update video coming up, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.